Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Neurosci IQ. In this episode, we will be talking about the development of the nervous system in the fetus. So let's get started now. Of course, as you might have expected, this process is very complicated and requires many different steps. In this video, we will just oversimplify and show you guys some of the key stages that are very important and are the most well studied. We will start with the three germ layers. Then we will talk about neural plate formation. And next we will talk about neuron migration. And specifically in this part, we will talk about the two main mechanisms of neuron migration, which are the glial mediated migration and also the somal translocation. Lastly, we will talk about some of the end stages of neurodevelopment in the fetus, which are synaptogenesis and apoptosis. So let's get started with the three main germ layers. Of course, we have the middle layer, the mesoderm. We have the endoderm, which is the inside layer. And we have the outer layer, which is the ectoderm. While all of these processes are very important for the development of the fetus and a lot of interesting stuff are happening, we will just, for the purposes of this video, focus on ectoderm, specifically neurons and the central nervous system to be more specific. So as I mentioned, we will mainly focus on the ectoderm, which gives rise to the epidermis and the neurons and some other types of tissue but we will mainly focus on the central nervous system basically what you have to know is that during gastrulation the embryo reorganizes itself into multiple layers and the three primary layers are named the ectoderm the mesoderm and the endoderm and as I already mentioned, the ectoderm is the outermost layer and it gives rise to the skin tissue and also neural tissue. One thing that you should also know is that the ectoderm also contains the neural crest as well as the neural plate which forms the neural tube. So let's talk a little bit about the neural plate and what it does. The neural plate itself is on the ectoderm and its formation, however, is regulated by chemical messengers which are secreted not by the ectoderm but by the middle layer or the mesoderm. And what happens in this part is as the fetus or the development is ongoing, the neural plate actually curves up and forms a U-shape and it, fo it forms a hollow tube called the neural tube. And the neural tube is very important for the development of the nervous system and it contain because it contains stem cells such as pluripotent cells and these are the precursor cells to many different types of cells in the nervous system and they form the spinal cord and the brain. Specifically, the tube center will lead to the formation of the spinal canal and the ventricle system in the central nervous system. So essentially to oversimplify, we have to talk about neural migration, neuron migration. What I mean by this is that before neurons are fully developed, of course, they have to, from where they were dividing, so the zones of perforation or the zones of dividing, they have to get to their intended location. This step is very complicated and is very tightly regulated, as you might have expected. And basically what it comes down to, to give you guys a brief overview, is that the main mechanism that it involves is that there are chemical messengers that the neurons sense with receptors, for example, and these chemical messengers either act as attractant, so attracting the neurons, 
or they act as repellent messengers. So the neurons would want to move away from the repellent chemical messengers. Of course, in some cases, there is also other cells involved, such as glial cells. And these cells, the glial cells can also help neurons get to their destination more efficiently. So to make the, another example to make this clear for you guys is that imagine we have a maze and the neuron is trying to figure out where to go after it has divided and the way it finds out where to go and migrate to that location is imagine there is a maze and every time there is like a pathway for the neuron the neuron is just following the attractant chemical messengers and following them while being repelled or not going in the areas that are repellent chemical messengers. So eventually it follows a sort of like a maze kind of movement and the neuron is just trying to go to where the signal is the strongest while avoiding where there is a repellent signal or the repellent chemical messengers, if that makes sense. So to make the picture even more clear is that we have two main types of neuron migration in, in the fetus. We have the glial assisted migration, as I mentioned, and you can already tell from the diagram is that it's a lot different than somal translocation because in glial assisted migration, we have glial cells which are basically helper cells and they support the neurons by providing mechanical support and they allow the migrating neurons to basically climb on and they just climb on to make them reach their destination a lot faster and more efficiently. The other process that is very important or the other type of migration is actually somal translocation. In this type of migration, as you can see, there is no glial cells involved. It's just mainly a bunch of attractant and repellent chemical messengers. And what happens is that the neuron itself extends its cytoplasm into very thin projections to sense or survey its environment. And the neuron is basically just following the trail of the attractant chemical messengers until it reaches the destination of where it intended to go. And of course, this is just an oversimplification. In real life, we could have both mechanisms combined. For example, a neuron using glial cells to get to the destination and at the same time also following a trail of attractant chemical messengers, which is attracting it to the site. So both mechanisms could also at the same time be at play, which is very important to realize. And of course, after the neurons have already reached their destination, now they have to grow and communicate with other neurons. And what happens is that they are basically, the neurons are trying to aggregate and form bundles with nearby neurons and communicate with each other. The most important step or process for this step is typically the formation of cell junctions, specifically gap junctions in the case of neurons. Gap junctions are made from these transmembrane proteins, also called connexin proteins to be exact, and they allow neurons to exchange ions directly, which is very efficient, and they can communicate with each other. This formation of gap junctions and aggregation of neurons is very important for very key or vital processes in the brain, which is basically differentiation of the cells and formation of neuron circuits, as well as the aggregation of neurons allows for the neurons to form synapses with each other and strengthen their communication. The last step that we will talk about in this video is that synaptogenesis and apoptosis, which happen towards the end of the development. Essentially what happens is astrocytes or helper cells assist neurons in forming synapses with each other after they have already aggregated. 
Of course, as you know, synapses are the main ways that neurons communicate or release neurotransmitters. And that's how most neurons communicate with each other. So this process is very, very important. And neurons that actually form synapses can exchange or get uh, get neutro neurotrophins such as neuron growth factor which is a very famous one and these growth factors are very essential for the survival of the neurons essentially what happens is that these growth factors allow the neurons to transcribe some very important cell machinery and allow the neurons to survive and not get not undergo apoptosis however on the other hand neurons who unfortunately do not form many synapses they are basically not very useful so these neurons actually undergo apoptosis because they haven't received survival chemicals from other neurons since they haven't formed any synapses. So the neurons who don't form any synapses by the end of the development, they basically just die and undergo apoptosis and they make room for the neurons who have made the synapses and have received the survival signals. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content in the future.